Well, hi everyone, this is Bob and Otis, live from Michigan. Now, normally I spend a lot of time on this channel deconstructing the flat earth, but I am Bob the science guy, so I thought that perhaps we could do some science. So for the last couple of weeks, I've had an interesting project going called Radio Jove. I have built a working radio telescope in my backyard, and I'd like to go ahead and share that with you. Now, the principle behind a radio telescope is actually pretty simple. You get an object out in the universe, say the sun, and every now and then things occur on the sun that cause it to emit radio waves. If you have an antenna here on Earth, you can actually pick those radio waves up and get some sort of a trace from it. The problem, of course, is that these radio signals are very weak. They're very faint signals. And you either need a very large antenna to pick them up, sometimes even a large parabolic dish, or you need some clever antenna design. Radio Jove uses something called dual dipole antennas. Let me show you what that is. Now, a very common antenna used in ham radio is called a dipole. And the reason it's called a dipole is that it has two sections to it. Uh, you set up two large poles, and you run a piece of rope to an insulator, and then you have an antenna wire on either side of what's called a ballum. And this would be, say, the positive side of the antenna, and that would be the negative side of the antenna. And then you have a feed cable that goes from this ballon here in the center over to your SDR radio or your ham radio. Now a dual dipole, as you would surmise, is two dipole antennas set up in what's called an antenna array. So for example with Radio Jove, the antennas are set up east and west and you have a south antenna and you have a north antenna. The feed line comes out of the ballum in the center to a power combiner or a splitter and then those signals are combined to a single line that goes over to your software-defined radio. Now here's where a little clever design comes into play. If you want to look at a target that is directly up, those feed lines from each of the antennas need to be the same length. However, what happens if your target is out in an angle, like this? So here are our two dipoles. Uh, this will be the north dipole here and the south dipole here. So here's a little problem that we have. If these feed lines are the same length, the signal is going to have to be in that general direction. But what if the signal instead is off at an angle uh, towards the target here? Here's the problem that we run into. If these feed lines are the same, the signals will arrive at the SDR out of phase because while the south signal is going like that, the north signal may actually be going like this because it's out of phase, because it has to travel this extra distance. So how do we fix this? Well, what we do is we add a little extra cable here before we go to our SDR. This is called a phasing cable. and it allows us to actually move the direction of the beam from that to that. So while these cables here are the same length, there's a connector here and there's an extra piece of cable put on the south antenna before it gets into the SDR and that takes into account the delay in the signal there. So here is my Radio Jove installation. You may recognize my observatory and you may recognize the garden trellis that I built for my wife. I've added a few PVC pipes at an angle to the top of that trellis and I have strung two dipole antennas from east to west in a north-south antenna array. You see the ballons uh, which are in the middle of the antennas and you see the feed lines coming off of the antenna and on the south antenna there is a one-quarter wavelength long phasing cable to steer the beam to about 70 degrees above the south horizon. Please excuse the uh, jungle-like condition of my yard. For some reason, the parts that I've ordered from my lawnmower from overseas are taking a little longer than normal to get here. 
So let's have a look at my Radio Jove installation and the live stream that I've got over on Shamrock Banks Observatory. Now here is the live stream from my Shamrock Banks Observatory channel. Uh, right here is the software defined radio and this is the raw signal from my two antennas. You can see both the graphics here and the signal trace up on top. On the left you see my Radio Jove software. So on top we have the real-time display and on the bottom we have a time lapse. So this is about one minute here and this is about 10 minutes of recording here. You see we had a particular thing that occurred right here and we can easily scroll back to see what that was. Now in the middle we've got three different frames. The bottom frame here is the position of Jupiter's moon Io compared to the line between Jupiter and Earth. Radio bursts from Jupiter occur during particular positions of Io in relationship to Earth and they are marked here and you see the little brown Jupiter on one of these traces here. The middle one is the altitude of both the Sun and Jupiter. As you can see, both the Sun and Jupiter are below the horizon. And then finally, this is the official live stream of Radio Jove. So if we see an event here, we can compare it to the official live stream to see if they captured it as well. That's a great way to determine whether or not we're seeing a real event or an artifact. The radio itself is tuned to 20.1 megahertz. Now looking at the tracing for Radio Jove, you'll see a bunch of short white dashes and they're literally scattered throughout the entire tracing. These are stray radio waves that originate here in Earth. Likewise, these little vertical spikes that you see are also terrestrial radial sources. Sometimes this is basically what lightning looks like. Uh, sometimes the lightning is actually even a little bit more intense. Now the reason that both the raw data and the Radio Jove data is presented here is that this is filtered and cleaned up a little bit, whereas this is a little bit more intense but somewhat grainy. You notice that there's a little event here that looks like a diagonal line. If you look very carefully, that's located about right there. And that's also seen down here. We'll talk about those in a minute. Now setting up this whole thing is the easy part. Getting the software to find radio tuned properly to start picking things up was an entirely different can of worms. Now in order to be really scientifically useful, Radio Jove needs to be calibrated. However, there's not any easy way to do that. So Larry, if you're out there, I've sent you a couple of emails. I understand that there's a program where you will loan out a calibrator for about two weeks. I would like to borrow it because I want to take good data with my Radio Jove. Now speaking of data and tuning, how do we know that we've got a sensitive radio telescope? We look for something called sweepers. So let's have a look at a few sweepers. Now here's Radio Jove from earlier today and I'm going to use it to demonstrate sweepers. So we'll look over on the right as I set it in motion and that is the raw data that you see. Now you notice that on the upper left there you'll see a little white line that goes horizontally and then you're going to see a vertical slanted or diagonal line that starts pretty much from the top of that white line and goes up. If you look carefully you can also see that in my Radio Jove tracing which is on the upper left. It's now about the mid-screen. A little more obvious in the raw tracing than it is in the Radio Jove tracing. That's why both of them are present. Now we've got another one coming in that's a double diagonal line and you can see that a little easier on my Radio Jove. It's just coming into uh, view now. But notice that it started at a rather low frequency. And then it's as time goes on, the frequency is increasing. What these are are called ionozones. And they are radars at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida that point straight up in the air and bounce off of the ionosphere. They use these to measure the height of the ionosphere and radio propagation. And they go off every few seconds 
And as you can see down in the time lapse in the lower left, you're actually seeing that start to show up. So if you wanted to see what one of these looked like, you could go to the time lapse and you could kind of scrub backwards on the video until that time lapse was at the extreme right edge of the pane right here. And it should appear in the other two screens. So while these are not really useful to us uh, in Radio Jove, they're just terrestrial radio noise, they're a handy way to check the sensitivity of your antenna array to see whether or not you can pick up those very weak signals. Again, these are coming from Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. One of the ways that I tuned my radio is that uh, Larry down in Georgia, who is the official Radio Jove uh, live streamer, picks up these sweepers and I can see whether or not I'm picking them up at the same time. So if I see a sweeper, I should see a sweeper on his stream in about 20 seconds. If he has a sweeper on his stream and I haven't detected it on mine, I know that my antenna has uh, lost a little bit of sensitivity or maybe the weather conditions aren't good or it's not correctly tuned. So what exactly are we trying to see with this antenna? Let's have a look at some solar radio bursts. So I finally got the software to find radio tuned to my satisfaction and I started up my actual live stream of Radio Joe. Now there's a couple of things that I want you to make note of. If you look down here in the position of Io, you see that Jupiter is in this red section, which is a high probability of Jovian radio bursts. However, I think that you should also look right above it and notice that both the Sun and Jupiter are pretty much in exactly the same position in the sky. Well, why is that? Let's go over to Stellarium real quick and see. Now, this isn't exactly at my position on Earth, but for this demonstration, it's really not that important. So here we are, we're looking north. Let's go ahead and turn off the sky. And let's turn off the Earth. Now of interest is that we are in summer, at least here in the Northern Hemisphere. So the sun is setting north of west. And actually the sun has already set, so it's below the horizon, which is right here. And notice that Jupiter is right next to the sun. Now this is a bit of a problem because if I pick up a radio burst, is it from the sun or is it from Jupiter? Uh, it'll be a lot easier in six months because Jupiter will be on the other side of the Earth from the sun. So I'll see the sun during the day and then it'll set and then Jupiter will rise and I'll see Jupiter at night. So if I pick up radio transmissions at night, I know they have to come from Jupiter. And if I pick them up during the day, I know they come from the sun. But let's go see what I saw within a few minutes of actually turning on Radio Jove for real. So once again, here's the Radio Jove. Here is the raw data. Here is Radio Jove. Here's the time lapse of Radio Jove and the official Radio Jove. So let's go ahead and start. So notice up here, the background is pretty uniform. And then we get this little item right here. And if we look over on the raw data, we see it's coming out here as well as it intensifies. This is probably a solar event right here. And this also may be a solar event. But notice it's still kind of glowy here compared to this side. So we're getting this bright lime green signal uh, that's kind of feathery. And we're also picking it up on the raw data. So that's what a solar burst looks like. Now as we continue on, we get a follow-up emission. So notice all of this bright yellow or lime green coloration here. Here's a little sweeper, but we can't really see it in here. Notice too that on the time lapse, we see evidence of these solar bursts down here as well. So if you want to scroll back and have a look at these, and you happen to see them over here, you can just scrub back a little bit and see them. And here's demonstrating how to scrub back and see them. So we just kind of reverse the video a little bit, or we reverse the live stream a little bit, and we can pull that out. Now just to show that this is real, let me show you the um, 
same image from the official Radio Joe site. So on the left, you see the solar, the solar event. And on the right, you notice that there, this almost looks horizontal, kind of like a cake. This very well may be a Jupiter event here, the appearance of this. That's pretty typical of a Jupiter radio burst. Now, I have to get the system calibrated in order to get some good readings from it. But in the next few weeks and months, I'm going to be spending a lot of time learning about these radio bursts because there are different classes of radio bursts, type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, type 5 solar bursts, and two different types of Jupiter radio emissions. Uh, I'll have future videos on that over on the Shamrock Banks Observatory channel. I just wanted to give you a basic introduction to what I'm doing with Radio Jove, and if you're interested, the link to the stream for Radio Jove is listed in the description of this video. And finally, all this is possible because of the generous support of my Patreons and channel members, and people that even toss in a couple of bucks here and there to buy new equipment for the observatory via PayPal. So the links to those are in the description as well. And if you would like to support the observatory, I'd love to have it. We do have the uh, telescope project going right now. We're down to the final payments on that telescope and should take delivery of it probably in August or September. Uh, I've already started getting uh, some of the equipment for the telescope delivered, and it'll all be done probably towards the mid to late part of summer. So until then, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you give me a like and a subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.